Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining me. I actually haven't made one of these in probably six weeks. You know, you got the whole like war in Ukraine going on. And it's just like, for some reason that just like drags on me. I'm sure it drags on many of us. There's just something about when you kind of realize what human beings are capable of when you watch them do stuff that maybe you think or hope. Maybe human beings have gotten past the need for war. Sometimes I wonder that or hope that. And then things like this happen and you're kind of just thrown back into this place of, I don't know, it sort of like almost pushes me into a bit of nihilism in a way because it's like human beings are just chimps. And if you look at human beings as just a bunch of chimps, then maybe a lot of this starts to make sense. But I have my nihilistic phases. Anyway, we are coming into the warmer part of the year here up in Canada. And so I'm excited. This is usually when I start feeling a little better. So hopefully I'll be inspired to talk more and do more episodes like this one. So this video, I wanna to touch on the INFJ door slam topic again. So I already did a video on this and I will link it somewhere. I'll link it in the description. I'll also put it up on the screen if you're watching the video. That's probably a good video to watch first. It's sort of my thoughts on the INFJ door slam. So this past week I had some new thoughts on this door slam topic specifically related to the aftermath of the door slam and how other people seem to perceive this situation and how it's actually quite different than we, as the people doing the door slamming, might perceive it ourselves. It's sort of a, an empathetic look at how others might be perceiving us and maybe a few ideas on how we can kind of help this process or improve this process in some way. Um, but first up, how about just a quick recap on what the door slam is in case you didn't go watch that other video yet or maybe you just need a little recap. So the door slam is exactly how it sounds. It's a pretty simple thing. It's basically slamming the door on somebody. It's basically ending a relationship. Cold turkey all at once, the door closes, the relationship is over. It's basically a very sudden removal of somebody from your life and that could be you know, figuratively or literally or emotionally. You could basically emotionally cut somebody out of your life in a door slam. Let's say you still have to be around them physically for some reason. Let's say they are a family member or some kind of friendship or acquaintance that you see or like a work colleague or... It could even be a romantic partner. But on an emotional level, it's like this relationship has been cut off. I think the door slam process can be very confusing for certain types of people, specifically people that don't seem to learn lessons until it's too late, if you know what I mean. Like there's some people out there you can tell them, hey, this needs to be done or this needs to be fixed or we need to work on this issue. And it's like they don't take you seriously until the blow up happens. Those types of people I find her extra confused because the door slam happens and then they realize that this is serious and maybe they act at that point like they wanna fix something, but at that point it's too late. So in the other video I talk about why the door slam happens, go check it out. But at its core, it's, it's this realization that you have and it's not even really a, a conscious decision. I think a lot of people look at INFJs when this door slam thing happens and they go, you know, that was, like this ice cold decision that they made. They must not have any empathy. They, you know, It's almost perceived as a very cold thing to do to somebody. But from the INFJ's perspective, it's very different than that. It's almost an act of self-preservation. It's basically this sudden realization that something you've been trying very hard for, let's say a relationship, you've been trying to fix it or get something out of that relationship or get it to this state that you need it to be. It's this sudden realization that it's not working and that it's never going to work. And it's almost this like subconscious realization. It's something that you can't really argue with. It's just a fact in your brain. This is the way it is. It's never going to get better. And so there's this action based on that realization. And the action is to move in a different direction and 
remove your energy from that relationship or that person. It's almost like it's a simultaneous giving in, giving in to this realization that it's in your brain and a letting go. So you let go and you just allow it to be free and you stop trying. So in some ways it's like this, it's a setting free. And I think that's why to anybody who has done a door slam, it's not this decision, it's not a malicious thing, it's just a backing off. It's like you've been holding your breath and then you release the breath and you just step back. The thing about a door slam is up until the point of the door slam, there is usually a lot of trying, a lot of emotional stress, at least for me, when this has happened. It's like I'm trying really hard, I'm trying to figure it out, I'm trying to solve the problems, I'm working on it. I often find that it's taken up a lot of my mental energy, you know, it's exhausting. So what at its core do I think causes this problem, just really quickly? I think that we can put up with a lot of stuff. But the one thing I think that really weighs on an INFJ in general is a feeling of being misunderstood. And if you have a relationship or you're going through life and you feel very misunderstood, maybe that's okay as long as you are understood in other areas. I mean, nobody is perfectly understood all the time. But what if you have a relationship where all there is is misunderstanding? There, there is never anything except misunderstanding. You try to explain yourself, but it's never received or accepted. That is the most dangerous situation and the most ripe, fertile breeding ground for a door slam. So if you, if you are an INFJ, or if you have other INFJs in your life, or if you're not an INFJ and you have an INFJ in your life, and you want to prevent the door slam from occurring, because the problem is it is a sudden process and sometimes it can hit you without you even realizing it, try to make them feel understood. I think it's really as simple as that. If you do that to an INFJ, that will improve things immediately and you could completely prevent the door slam. The problem is, is that most people that get door slammed wouldn't want to watch a video like this. Um, they don't really care, especially like toxic people. They don't really care about you and you feeling understood. They care about their own needs and getting those needs met. So in those types of relationships, I think that's why the understanding sort of goes by the wayside and the INFJ often is left feeling very misunderstood. So here's the analogy I kind of came up with. This is what I think an INFJ is like. They're like a fire. And let's just say the INFJ's relationship, that could be with a friendship or a romantic partner or a family member, it's like a fire. And so if it's like burning really hot and bright, that relationship's doing well. You know, if it's sputtering out in kind of a low fire, maybe it's not doing that great. And there's this attempt right, from the INFJ person to always build that relationship back up. But what happens if, you know, you're down to like coals? So when there's coals, you know, you stick a piece of dry kindling in there and you can start that fire up again. And it represents potential. And it's the INFJ in the state of still believing there's potential in that relationship. That's what these coals are because at any point, you just got to put some more wood in there and you've got a fire again. But with a fire, there's a point where those last few coals go out. And then at that point, no matter how much wood you put in there, it's not starting back on fire. It's, it's out. The fire's out. You'd have to start the fire over again <laughs> from scratch. There is no more fire. So if you come along and you're like, whoa, this fire just got out. I better start working on it now because you're the type of person who didn't realize that the coals meant you should start working on it then you're gonna throw some wood in that fire and it's not gonna start up. And at that point, I think some things happen. There's some perceptions. All right, so we're finally getting to the point of this video, which is the aftermath and where kind of things go wrong, I think. So from the outside, let's just flip the script for a second. You're friends or you're in a relationship with an INFJ. Let's say this person is very warm, compassionate, helpful, empathetic, 
Sure, we have our prickly sides now and then, and we can get a little argumentative, and we might sound interrogating now and then as we try to get to the truth of issues. But in general, I think most INFJs want social harmony, and they want what's best for the people around them, and they're willing to work towards that to help the people in their lives. And during the stress of the pre-door slam, the INFJ might even get more so, more interested in the person, more talking, more helpful, trying to solve some kind of issue, some kind of problem. However, when the door slam occurs, this normally warm, compassionate INFJ person can suddenly and very, very quickly turn very cold. It's, it's sort of like a turtle just retreating into the turtle shell. That person's gone. They're off in the dark inside that shell. So why is the INFJ doing that though? INFJ is protecting themselves, self-preservation. They're exhausted. Usually it comes out of this pure exhaustion. It's like, I can't do this anymore. This isn't working, I'm, I'm done. They retreat. In the process, it makes them almost look malicious, I think is the problem. So if the person who got door slammed tries to come back to the INFJ and talk about it, they're gonna be met with something very unfamiliar. For myself, the few times that this has happened where I've door slammed somebody and they try to talk to me again, I almost have nothing to say. It's, it's just, I get very quiet. I don't ask them any questions. I don't give any insight, which is normally what I sort of do in life. I ask people lots of questions. I'm curious about people and what's going on in their lives and their relationships especially. And if they're going through some kind of trouble or problem, I, it's like kind of weird. I, I just want to hear about it and work through it. And there's like a, a connection, I feel like, that almost happens out of that. And I try to understand people as they're going through sort of troubled times. And but after the door slam occurs, I don't do that anymore. Also, I've noticed my ability to small talk completely evaporates. And if this person tries to come up to me and start talking about the weather or something else, like I, it just completely bewilders me. I'm just like, like, are you kidding me? We're, t we're talking. And inside my head, I'm just like, I'm just like spinning and I just try to get out of there. So I remember when I went through this and the biggest door sign in my life was when I went through my separation. And it was essentially a door slam because one day I was trying to fix the marriage and then the next day I wasn't. So like I said before, there's certain types of people who try to fix things after the fact. So she began after the fact to try to fix stuff. And in my door slam state, I accepted none of it. I saw all of it as fruitless, all of it as pointless. I saw all of it as just another attempt at the cycle that's gone around and around and around. I think to her, it was very weird because she's like, suddenly there's this very, she doesn't even know this person. And she even said it to me, I remember, she's like, I feel like I don't even know you anymore. This was after we had already separated. I, I feel like I don't even know you. I don't even know who this person is in front of me. And so for the first time, she was seeing this other side of me. She was seeing the person, she was seeing me when I don't care. I don't want to work on it anymore. It was the first time maybe she'd ever seen that. And even though it is about self-preservation and about protecting ourselves, it doesn't mean that there isn't a tremendous amount of emotion and guilt. I felt awful. But here's the thing, from the other person's perspective, they don't see that. They don't see me feeling bad for them. It's like the empathy is still there, but I don't show it. So what does the other person see? The other person sees this very cold person that used to be warm. They used to be warm, compassionate, and helpful. Now they're very unhelpful, non-compassionate, and very cold. I th and here's sort of what I realized this week is that the INFJ, stuck in their self-preservation mode, just wanting to be accepted. 
I just want to be accepted for my decision that this relationship's over. Um, I have some new boundaries now. I'm putting up these boundaries. Can you just accept it? And the other person is usually like in this state of shock and they're trying to figure out what in the world's going on because this once warm person is now very cold and it almost looks like a contradiction, I think. It seems like hypocrisy and it's like they start to wonder, well, who's the real person here? Are they, were they pretending all those years with me when they were acting warm and helpful and compassionate? Was that just a huge act? Because all I see is this cold front now. You know, I think the reality is, is that all of us, we have these multiple parts of us. And INFJs, we have this strange dichotomy. And it's this, it's this dichotomy between extreme empathy sometimes, just like over the top. And maybe it's not even, maybe empathy is not the right word, but it's a desire to have social harmony and do what is required to make people comfortable and feel good. And we want to push towards that. But then on the other hand, we can become these very uncaring, rational people, logical people that can kind of cut right to the bone and appear very non-empathetic. So in the aftermath of the door slam, as an INFJ is going through all these emotions, you're second guessing themselves a little bit sometimes, um, feeling terrible, for this other person, you know, still feel empathy. But at the same time, it's like completely done and realizing that there's no point. I think one of my goals is to become, it's almost like I need to learn how to act a little bit more. Like if I've door slammed somebody, if I really don't like somebody, if I don't really want somebody in my life, if like, like let's say she's got like a really toxic boss or a toxic coworker, can I exist with that person and not cause trouble and not come across very cold even though I am 100% done with that person? How do I do that? So I go to co-parenting counseling because I have kids. I have them 50% of the time with my ex. She has them the other 50% of the time. And there's been so many things that have happened over the last three years. We've had to go to court um, over really stupid things. There's just, you know, if I thought there was a lack of understanding and trust before, it is com it's just completely gone. Uh, it is very hard for me to have this co-parenting relationship. It, it takes an incredible amount of energy for me to appear warm at all. Considering there's so much stuff going on and there's so many problems and I, I would, I'm trying to push to go to this counselor more so that we can try to work through some of these problems. Um, she doesn't like going. And at this point she said that she's not going anymore. And there's all kinds of issues with the kids that I would like to discuss. Like I see, you know, emotional issues in both my kids that I would like to dive into and work on with her to try to, you know, make sure we're both on the same page. But she doesn't want to do that. And it's, it's very hard for me when I feel like, you know, there's lawyers coming after me on her behalf for me to still be warm to her. Does that make sense? It's more like, how do you, while in fight mode with somebody, also remain civil? It's a bit of a conundrum for me, and I wonder if this door slam and sort of the aftermath of the door slam has something to do with it. What, let's say you're with an INFJ and you want to prevent this door slam from happening. The fact that you'd even be watching a video like this already tells me that you're probably the type of person who wants to work on problems, so you're, you're doing pretty good. But like a fire, all relationships need tending. They need to be worked on. As long as there are still coals, it can be repaired. If the fire goes out completely, it probably can't be repaired. So anyway, that is sort of what I wanted to say. I think a lot of people almost view INFJs as these, 
through this door slam process, it's like INFJs get this very dramatic label, like, oh, that person must just be dramatic. They must be malicious. They must hate me. They must be trying to attack me. They must be super toxic. So I guess the point of this video is just to notice that there's these two different, drastically different views of what happened in that door slam process. And if we are aware of this as INFJs, maybe we can work towards a softer landing. So let's just say the door slam is a very hard landing. It's almost like a crash landing. Is it possible for us to turn this into a soft landing if we are aware of it? And I think that can kind of help us. It can kind of protect our reputations in a way. Because if we get known as these people who cut people off and are very cold, I'm not sure that's the best for a reputation. Not that reputation is everything, but I think I've learned recently that reputation is, it's important. Um, community and networks are important, especially in business. Anyway, that's about all I have today. Just a few thoughts on that. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Otherwise, hope you guys have a great day. See you later.